Before I start this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to my boy Chris Parsuk, who just dropped Vital Soap Company. And this is for all the people who love boxing, jiu jitsu, wrestling, MMA, kickboxing, all those combat sports. You really want to get this soap, and I'll let you know why at the end of the video. Yo, everybody, it's me, Patrick. I'm so damn tired. I was up a couple nights ago playing Fortnite from 10 p.m. to 5.30 in the morning. I played for eight hours straight and I didn't even catch one dub. And if you think about it, that's pretty crazy because I basically put in an eight hour shift of playing a video game when I could have been out there trying to make money or trying to make friends because I have very little money and I have very little real friends. But anyways man, today I'm going to be breaking down another fighter in three moves and today I chose Fabricio Verdum. Fabricio Verdum in my eyes is going to go down as one of the greatest heavyweight fighters of all time. Not only for his accomplishments, but for this goddamn smile that he does. Oh god, just look at that smile. Alright, so the first move that we're going to break down is actually kind of difficult to pull off because you're going to need two things. You're going to need a boomerang and Colby Covington. So all you got to do is grab the boomerang get into a little argument with him, and whip it out of his head. This actually makes sense because Brazilians and Australians actually have a lot in common with each other. In fact, according to the BuzzFeed, they actually have 13 things in common with each other. And one of those things is that apparently Brazilians and Australians are obsessed with collecting Tazos. And if you don't know what a Tazo is, I don't have no clue either. The second move that is a staple of Verdum striking is a staple or staple. Um, Anyways, the staple of Verdum striking, Verdum loves to work the basic 1-2. But what makes his 1-2 so special is that if he ever punches past his opponents or they block his 1-2, he uses that opportunity to grab the double collar tie. From there, he'll work the body with knees and then he'll start kneeing you in the head, just like what he did to Roy Nelson. The final technique is a really nifty one that I really like. It's the fake takedown shot into the flying knee. And some of you might remember this as the way that Mark Hunt got knocked out by Fabricio Verdum in their fight. The whole fight, Fabricio Verdum was trying to take down Mark Hunt with no success. So in the second round, he switched it all up and played with Mark Hunt's anticipation. He went for a quick sloppy takedown, which Mark Hunt quickly blocked. And at the next opportunity, what Fabricio Verdum did was that he made it look like he was about to go for a takedown. Mark Hunt dropped his hips and set his weight and dropped his head, getting ready to defend the takedown. And Fabricio Verdum jumped up and flying kneed him in the dome. In my How to Fight Like Michael Page in three moves, I showed you that Michael Page loves to wait for people to shoot in for a takedown or start bending down at the waist really predictably and then he'll shoot a flying knee up to catch them. The power of the intercepting knee isn't that the knee is so hard, but rather that your opponent is moving into your knee, creating a collision, adding their weight into the force. Michael Page's intercepting knee was more of a defensive technique and Fabricio Verdum used his intercepting knee more as an offensive technique. So there you guys go, three signature moves by Fabricio. For Doom. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, like the video if you did, and also leave a comment down below of who you'd want me to see break down in three moves next. And subscribe to the channel for more delicious content just like this. Also make sure to follow me on all my social media outlets. For Instagram, it's PatPatchFit. For Twitter, it's Patrick underscore Pida. Snapchat is PattyPatch. And if you want to ask me any questions about the fight game or anything at all, you can email me at patpatchfight at gmail.com. Also remember to share this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks guys. Peace. Now, if you're like me and you've had a hard day of submitting people on the mats, you're probably going to need a shower and something to clean yourself with in the shower. Vital Soap is an all-natural soap that helps you stay safe from fungus and infections, such as the staph infection, like this one that former UFC champion and pride fighter Kevin Randleman had. Seriously, I don't want to show you this, but Google Kevin Randleman staph infection and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Vital Soap comes in three unique scents. Original, which is 
is going to make you smell almondy because of its tea tree properties, lemongrass, with its relaxing light and fresh lemony smell with earthly undertones, and vital black, which actually has activated charcoal in it, which not only helps keep you clean, but helps with your acne. Personally, I love this soap and it keeps me clean after jujitsu. Not only that, I don't want to get staph infection, which is really scary. And personally, my favorite soap is vital black because of the activated charcoal. Also, in case of robbery, these blocks are so big, you can stuff them down the sock and show the robber what's up. If you want to buy Vital Soap and avoid nasty staph infections, then visit vitalsoapcompany.com and make sure to like their Facebook page and follow them on Instagram. Stay clean everyone, peace.